Real Life Church. Life beyond the walls. I want you to get used to that statement. Is real life a life beyond the walls? Beyond the walls. We're not bounded by walls. Beyond the walls. Amen. A couple weeks ago, my wife and I traveled to St. Louis, Missouri. I was excited because I got an opportunity to celebrate my high school football coach. He was being honored in the Hall of Fame. And we were grateful to go see him and celebrate him. It was an opportunity for me to get with some of my old teammates, some of my old brothers that I haven't seen in 20 years. And like expected, as soon as my wife and I ran to her, my football brothers, this was the team that in St. Louis, Missouri, we were the state champions in football. And it's overwhelming. I don't know if you've ever won anything in your life. If you, listen, if you, if you don't believe you've ever won anything in your life, you won the gift of life. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you were up against five million sperm. And you won. So don't ever think you ain't never won nothing. You here, ain't you? <laughs> Hallelujah. We won a state championship and it was love. And as, turn me down just a little bit. I got to, we got to love on everybody. I got to see all my boys. As I went around and I hugged everybody. And it was so much love and it's been 20 years. But it was one person that was visibly missing that I was looking for. I was looking for him. I wanted to see him. I wanted to hug his neck. I wanted to tell him I love him. I wanted to tell him that I forgave him. And I was hoping to see what God has done in his life. But he was, he was not there. He was missing. And before I tell you what happens next, I got to tell you this. His name is Jamarsh Robinson. Jamarsh Robinson was not just my high school teammate. Jamarsh Robinson was also my college teammate. He and I story shifted when he and I took a trip to Illinois where we went to college. And we wanted to get acclimated to the football team. We wanted to get in shape. We wanted to be prepared. And we spent a couple of weeks there. And then we're on our way back to St. Louis. And on our way back to St. Louis, he fell asleep in the car. And as I'm driving, I'm running out of gas. And as I was running out of gas, I realized, man, I don't have any money. And if I keep driving like this, I won't, we won't make it into St. Louis. And so I remember tapping Jamarsh, and I said, Jamarsh, I'm running out of gas. Can you hold me down? Can I borrow a couple dollars so that we can get gas in the tank and we can get to St. Louis? And he gets up, rolls over, and looks at me and says, man, you got money. Man, you got money. And I'm like, no, Jamarsh, we're running out of gas. Look, man. We don't have, I don't have any money. I'm totally broke. I have nothing. He said, man, you got money. You got it. And I was like, man, I don't have it. He was like, no, man, you a shyster. I know, I know how you are. You a shyster. And we get to the gas station. I, I, I mean, I'm stunned. Here, you rolled with me the whole time. I didn't ask you for nothing. And now I'm the shyster. And so I'm, I'm, I'm mad. And I remember being at the gas station, embarrassed, hurt, confused. And I called my father. I said, Dad, I'm at the gas station. I have no gas. And Jamarsh has a few dollars, but he won't allow me to borrow or to have it just to put gas in the tank. He said, well, put, put him on the phone. Let me talk to him. 
And my dad says, Jamar, just give him the $10. And when you get into St. Louis, come by, swing by the house, and I'll pay you back. So he gave me the $10 reluctantly, gives me the $10. I put the, the $10 into the tank, and we're on our way into St. Louis. On our way into St. Louis, he's now up, he's agitated, and he looks over at me, and he says, take we got grown folks in here. He says, take me to F home. Now, you can only imagine I have been an egotistical <laughs> football player, athlete, at this point for 18 years. And when I heard those words, I looked at him like, I don't know who you think you're talking to. But... I ain't taking you home. I'm going to take you to my dad's house to get the money because you're not going to be running around here with a mindset that I'm shysting you or trying to use you for no money. No, I'm going to be obedient. My dad said, bring you to the house. That's where we're going. He says, no, take me home or I'm going to knock you the flipping out. And my pride jumped up. And I'm like, I love to see you do that. <laughs> and you can only imagine, this has been my football brother for the last three years. I could not even believe my ears. You can imagine at this point, we're going back and forth, cussing each other out. And we made it to a fork in the road at a stoplight. If I make a left, I'm five minutes from my dad. If I make a, a right, I'm eight minutes from his house. And as we pulled up to that stop sign, that stoplight, I had one of those 1984 Toyota Camrys where you could actually pull the key out while it's in gear. He took the key out of the gear and got out the car and said, get out, we're about to fight. Now, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm out of my mind. I'm like, what? I, I'm confused. We're in the middle of a street. There's traffic. He jumps out, comes to my side, and oh, we're about to fight. I said, man, give me my key. No, we're about to fight. And I walked up on him, reached for my keys. He sucker punched me in the head and punched me in the top of the head, and we began to tussle. In the street, we tussling. There's traffic. There's people that are watching us. And all I can remember is once I got a hold of them, I had them in a chokehold. And I was going to put the boy to sleep. <laughs> and all I can remember is, all I can remember is, as I'm looking around, people are watching us. Our, my car is in the middle of the street drawing traffic, and people are yelling out their windows, stop, y'all need to stop. And all I can remember him grasping for air saying, let me go. And I said, man, why are we even doing this? We're supposed to be brothers. And here we are looking like some fools on the side of the road fighting one another. And I said, give me my keys back. He said, let me go. I said, give me my keys back and I'll let you go. He said, let me go. Give me my keys. So, he, so I let him go. And he runs to the car. Closed the door. And literally, the window was down. So I'm grabbing at him, clawing at him. And both of us are exhausted. Because we've just been wrestling for the last seven, eight minutes. And all I can remember, when I looked in his eyes... As he was driving off, was that one of us about to die tonight. And for the first time in my life, I got scared. I got scared because I knew one of us was going to either die or we was going to end up in jail. And so I gave in and I let the car go. I'm hurt. I'm humiliated and I hate him 
because I'm in the middle of the street and I just lost a fight by force. And I got to walk home to see my father, see the son that he raised to be a man, lose a fight. And now I'm humiliated. I'm hurt. And I'm going to get revenge. I'm going to get my payback. It ain't over. At this Hall of Fame meeting, I asked one of the brothers, I said, where's Jamarsh? I couldn't wait to see him. Where's Jamarsh? And one of the brothers says, he lost his mind, man. They, they, every now and again, you can see him on the show talking to himself, walking back and forth. He's lost his mind. And I'm like, oh, no. He lost his mind. Oh, no. It hurt my heart to learn that what I wanted to happen 20 years ago happened at a time where my heart has, is now, has now been acceptable in God's sight. And I didn't want that to be, I didn't want that to happen. And that's what leads me to this scripture we're about to read. Please pull up Psalms for me. Chapter 19, verse 14. It's up on the screen. Check out the screen. The Bible says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation, what talks to my heart, meditation is what's talking to your heart, become acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Have you ever been in a situation when somebody hurt you, humiliated you, made you hurt, made you hate them, and you wait for them to go through some pain? You wait for it. You anticipate it. You wait for, listen, I don't know who I'm, listen, is there anybody that waited for that person to die? I wanted you to die. I want you to die. Is there anybody that's ever been hurt, humiliated, somebody made you hate them, and you took the matters into your own hands, or you wished for something to happen to them? Have you ever, is there anybody that's ever been in a situation where somebody hurt you, humiliated you, caused you to hate them, and they got what they deserved? Yeah. They suffered some illness, terminal illness, or they lost a, a loved one that was dear to them, or they lost their marriage or their relationship, or they lost their job. They got humiliated. And it happened, and you got excited about it. Yeah, they finally did, and they didn't know Jesus. Or they lost it, and yes, finally, retribution, revenge. If that is you, or if you've ever experienced that, listen to me. And I would love to say this to the end, but I'm going to say it now. Stop it. Let it go. Because the Bible says this, if you have that kind of heart, you are a murderer. Mm -hmm. The Bible says this, he says this, he says in Proverbs, he says this, in Proverbs 24, verse 17, he says this, if you get excited or you have joy or celebrate your enemy, when they stumble, the Bible says that God, hallelujah, would not accept you. He says he won't, no, he won't approve you and he will take away the wrath from your enemy. Yeah, he will take the wrath. Look, there it is. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls and do not let your heart be glad 
when he stumbles. Go to verse 18. Go to verse 18 if you would. Come on now, you back there. Now you, you threw it up there. Praise the Lord. So who got that scripture? You back there, you just give me 18. Uh, 24, 24, 17, Proverbs. We got a TV screen. That's all right. We got it fr uh, frozen. What does it say? Proverbs 24. Don't rejoice when your enemies fall. Don't be happy when they stumble, for the Lord will be displeased with you. He will be displeased with you and will turn his anger away from them. Thank you, sir. If this is you and you have these types of thoughts and you have this vengeful mindset, just stop it. Let it go. Pastor, what, do, what, do, what should I do then? What should I do? The only way you're going to have peace in this is you're going to have to pray to the prince of peace. That's what you do. You got to learn to pray. You're going to have to pray. Touch your neighbor and say, you're going to have to pray. Why is that? Why is that, Pastor? Because Jesus said, the master said, the Lord said, bless those that curse you. Do good to those that hate you. He says, pray for them that spitefully use you and say ill will against you. Pray for them. Why? He says, this, because this proves that you are the child. You are my child. This proves that you are my child. And this is, this is important. Why? Because it's God's character to shine his light on the just as well as the unjust. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. He loves everyone. And you prove, hallelujah, evidence of his heart. Touch your neighbor say, you prove evidence of his heart. And if you don't have evidence of his heart, he won't approve you. And if you don't have evidence of his heart, he won't approve you. You will be considered a murderer. A murderer? What are you talking about, a murderer? What are you talking about? Yeah, a murderer. When when you hate your, the Bible says when you hate your brother, you are considered a murderer and, you, and, the, and eternal life is not in you. That's what it says. This is what it says. Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our Master, teaches us this in the Bible. Give me, do me a favor, give me Matthew chapter 5. Give me Matthew chapter 5. Hallelujah. Give me verse 20, 22. Hallelujah. Jesus gives us an example of this. He, this is what he says. Give me, give me verse 21. Give me verse 21. Watch this. You have heard that the, that the ancients were told you shall not commit what? Murder. Because they understood that if you murdered someone, murder will come back on you. It's one of the Ten Commandments. As a matter of fact, if you kill someone, they believed in the eye for an eye. A life for a life, a tooth for a tooth. So if you kill someone, then that blood will be on your hands. You will be killed in return. This is what he says. You have heard that the ancients were told, you shall not, what, commit murder. And whoever commits murder shall be liable to the courts. You're liable. Give me verse 22. But watch this. Jesus is given now a kingdom principle. This ain't got nothing to do with people. This is his kingdom now. And at last I checked, he's the judge. He's the final authority. Watch what the master says. He says, but I say to you that everyone who is angry, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Somebody made you mad? Somebody, you gave somebody that much money. They made you mad? Watch this. But I say to you that anyone or everyone who is angry with his brother, watch this. He didn't say liable of the court. You are guilty before the court. Watch this. That's how powerful the things that are in your heart. 
Jesus is giving them a principle, giving them a kingdom principle that what the kingdom cares about is your heart and your words. That the kingdom, the world cares about your deeds. I'm going to get there. The world cares about your works and your deeds, but the kingdom cares about your word and your heart. Watch what Jesus says. The master says, he says, and whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing. In other words, you're downgrading them. You're telling them they're good for nothing. They're nothing. You're, you're, tell, you're reducing who they are. God made them in his image and his likeness. And you're saying that he's nothing. And God, this is what says, and Jesus, the master says, you, you shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. Do you understand the Supreme Court means that there's no more appeals? You can't appeal anymore after they say what they say. That's it. This is the Sanhedrin, and his followers are hearing this. Can you imagine? They're like, what are you talking about? It's just a little word. Six of stones may break my bones, but a word ain't going to ever. And then he says this last thing. He says, and whoever says you fool shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. What? The fiery hell? What are you talking about, Jesus? Oh, hold on. Jesus is saying if you curse someone, if you're cussing somebody out, do you understand that when you, hallelujah, you speak at someone, you are actually speaking back at yourself? So when you curse someone... Eligible for hellfire. And Jesus, our master, is giving his disciples kingdom principles. In other words, how the kingdom operates. I can imagine them hearing this. I can imagine you hearing this and be like, man, come on, man. Nobody knows what I'm feeling. Nobody knows. I just said a little thing. I just said a little word. But don't you know that what you're feeling, your heart, and don't you know the words that you speak out, speak out of your mouth are considered eternal? Okay, I don't got nobody. Give me some water because my voice is about to burn out. Do you know that your heart and your words are eternal? The things that you see are temporary. They'll all pass away. But his word will never pass away. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is totally different than the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of this world Hallelujah. Judges the things that they see. The kingdom of heaven judges the thing that he don't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He judges the things that he doesn't see. This is why G, the, the Bible says in 1 Samuel, hallelujah, verse, I believe, 16, verse 7, he says that, that the way I see, the Lord sees, I don't see the way the man sees. For the man sees, hallelujah, the outer appearance. That's how they judge. They, they see outer appearance. But he says, I, the Lord, I look at the heart. I see the heart. I see what's invisible. This is why it's important for you to know what you say is more powerful or more dangerous than what you do. What you say is more powerful then even what you do, because what you do can pass away. It can be forgotten. But you remember what mama said. You remember what your teacher said. You remember what they said. Because what the words are eternal. The words, hallelujah, is how God created the world. Everything that you see, everything that is created, that you see, everything that is not seen was created by the word. It's eternal. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The kingdom of God operates totally on the Word. Amen. On the Word. Everything, its currency, the way it moves, the way it's structured is in the Word. It's power, it's authority, it's creative authority, it's Word. And the Bible says that He made man in His image and His likeness, which means that He's given you, hallelujah, Creative authority. 
Not only authority to create, but you have a creative authority to judge. Do you know that there's no other creation that has that? Not even the angels have the authority to judge. You, you have authority, creative authority and power to judge your angels. He's given that to you. Hallelujah. It's not, it's the word, it's the word. This is why you should, none of you should ever fear the devil. You should never fear him. Because he's no, he hasn't have, he doesn't have authority to create or finish. Ooh, that just hit, that just hit me. It just hit me. What are you talking about, Pastor? What I'm saying is all he can do is distort and pervert. Huh. But the Word of God is the beginning and the end. He's the author and finisher. And he's given you authority. So that means that the enemy may distort a thing, but he, he can't never end no fight. You have, I don't know who I'm talking to. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. You have authority to end the fight. And I wish I had somebody here that if the enemy dared to come, come and attack me, he may try to start the fight, but I'm going to finish him. And I'm going to remind him, hallelujah, what his future is. You are defeated foe. You belong at the bottom of my feet. Hallelujah. God made me the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. I am a child of God. No weapon formed against me can ever prosper, especially your weapon, because you can't even finish a fight. You're already defeated. Already defeated. We should never fear the enemy because he can't start a thing nor finish a thing. He hasn't been given that type of authority. You have. You. You, 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 It's the word, it's the word, it's the word, it's the word. But it's not just the word that God judges that, is, that, that has so much power and authority. Hallelujah. But it's your heart. It is the heart. The heart is considered the inner self. It's you, it's your inner self. I said it's your inner self, it's your consciousness, it's your volition. It is, your, it is your, your conscious thoughts. It is your volition. It's, it's who you are. It's your inner person. Hallelujah. It is evidence of who you are. Hallelujah. It is you, but it, your heart is you concealed. But your words is your inner you revealed. Stay with me, good church. I know I'm out of time, but Jesus is always in time. Is that all right? It is, it is you revealed. This is why you got to be careful what comes out of your mouth because nobody will ever know your intent while your mouth is closed. It's not what goes in the mouth that defiles you, but it's what comes out of the mouth. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. It is your authority. It is your power. This is why you got to be careful about what you're saying. Because by the authority of God and the kingdom of God, you can kill somebody or make something alive. It's in the heart. 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 This is why I love Jesus when he says, if you don't believe me for what I'm saying, if you don't believe the words that I am saying, at least believe me for my work's sake. Why? Because I understand that the kingdom of the world only operates on works. But my kingdom works on word. <laughs> Mouth. You're, you're revealing your volition. This is why in the, what is it called? The M Miranda warnings. That's why, the, that's a kingdom statement. You have the right to remain silent. Do you know why that law, that, that is a real law. Be silent. You have the right to be silent, to remain silent. Anything you say we be, will be held against you in the court of law. That is a kingdom principle. Why? Because what you've kept concealed that only God knew, you opened up your mouth and you revealed it. Now I know your intent. Now I know your volition. Now I know what you're thinking, what you're believing. This is why when people say, I, didn't mean, I, I know I said that, but I didn't mean it. Yes, you did. It was in your heart. It was in your heart. It was in your heart. You meant it. You, you, was, you was meditating. You did. That's how you feel. That's how you feel. That's why you said it. 
But this is why I love Jesus Christ so much. This is why I love Jesus Christ. I don't know why you love Jesus Christ, but this is why I love him. I love Jesus Christ so much. Hallelujah. Because if the Father, hallelujah, was the heart, if he was a type of heart, if he was the type of heart, if he was the type of inner self, concealed, Come on. then Jesus is the inner self revealed. He is the evidence. He is the militia. Hallelujah. He is the consciousness of God. He is the intention of the heart of God. This is why the words and the heart are so important to the kingdom. Why is it so important to the kingdom? See, don't let anybody fool you that you got to do anything extra than what the Bible is telling you to do. Because the Bible says that, hallelujah, if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be, you shall be saved. Why, pastor? Wait, wait, you got to do all that stuff. God is judging heart and words. Hallelujah. Your hearts and your words have to be acceptable in his sight. Hallelujah. This is why the Bible says, he says, he says, with the, with the heart, a man believes and is made right with God. You are called righteous. You're made right. I'm good with him now. Why? Because my heart's right. If my heart's right, I'm good with him. Yeah. But it is in, hallelujah, but it is in the confession that makes sure that I'm, it makes certain that I'm saved. It is by, it is by confession I am, it is salvation unto, excuse me, confession unto salvation. It is the confession that makes me saved. Why is that? Because as soon as, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. As soon as I reveal, hallelujah, the thing that was concealed, that means that everything that had me bound got to bow down to Christ Jesus. That makes me saved. So it's no longer bottled up. My confession by declaring Jesus, every knee shall bow. Then every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. And if you're that person, then your heart will be acceptable to God. There is a trace of him. That you are Hallelujah. A witness of his heart. Because your heart is like his heart. But if your heart's not like his heart, it's not acceptable. And you're a murderer. And you're a murderer. And you're a murderer. Let me give you an example. Pull up Genesis chapter 4. Give me Genesis chapter 4. Let me give you an example. Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. I always thought. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I always thought that Jesus, I always thought that God did not receive Cain's sacrifice because he didn't give the first. Or he didn't give the last. Or he didn't give his best. None of that stuff is real. None of that stuff is true. No, 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 no. It's not what he gave that wasn't accepted. It was how he gave it is why it wasn't accepted. The, the Bible says that Cain, that, that Abel sacrificed his sacrifice, his worship, his sacrifice, his worship, his heart, his heart, his worship, his sacrifice, his heart, his words, and his heart was accepted. Abel's, but Cain's wasn't. He didn't accept it. And God told, he told Cain, if you do well, hallelujah, will not you be accepted? And I'm like, Lord, what are you talking about? Was it because he didn't give his first fruits? Is it because he didn't give as much? Did he give too little? Did he, give, did he not give enough? And then the Bible, the Lord showed me two things. He told me, he said, no, remember when the poor woman gave me nothing but a penny. She only gave me a mite, but her mite was more than people giving a whole bunch. Why? Because the Bible says she gave it with all her heart. So I had to find this thing, and it says it in the Bible. In 1 James, I believe, 
It's in, it's in James, I believe. It's in 1 James, I believe. Chapter 3, uh-huh. verse 12, I believe it's there. And what it says is this. Go and pull it up. Pull it up for me. Jesus. Okay. No, 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 no. Give me, give me third, give me, excuse me, I said James, didn't I? John, give me first John. Give me first John. Three, 12. Mm-hmm. Thank you, sir. It says, watch this, watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch what he says. I'm going to go at verse 11. It says, for this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should, what, love one another. Okay? Love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and watch this, and murdered his brother. Wait a minute, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, he murdered his brother, God, but you judged him before he murdered him. But you, but God, you didn't accept his gift before he murdered him. So what, what, what is John going to tell us here? It says, but verse 12, not as Cain who was of a wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Watch this. Because his works were evil and his brothers was righteous. Okay. Well, I know that I got to have faith in him to be right with him. Okay. So that means Cain didn't have faith. Okay. What does it say? Watch this. Watch this. It's the, the, the answer is in verse 13. Watch. Do not marvel, my brother, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life. In other words, Cain hated his brother. And if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. And a murderer cannot be accepted by God. Hallelujah. Eternal life is not in you. That's why. I, this whole time I'm like, I thought it was because he gave No, 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 no. It's because he despised his brother. It's because he despised his brother. Let me share you one more story with you, and then we're going to, you know what it is. You all right? You all right? One of my favorite stories in the Bible is Jonah. God gave Jonah a word. said, I want you to go to Nineveh. I'm about to judge them. I'm about to destroy the city. But I want you, my prophet, you're my prophet, find my phone, my prophet. I need you to go to Nineveh and tell them what I'm about to do. Warn them. And God's prophet goes the other way. He flees from the presence of God. His heart ain't in it. No, no, I ain't doing that. Mm -mm. Because Nineveh's my enemy. Nineveh was an enemy of Israel. And Jonah was like, uh-uh, I ain't about to give him a word because I know your character, God. And if I give him a word, you, go, you might change your mind. And so Jonah, because he didn't want God to change his mind, because perhaps, jo because perhaps Nineveh may have received the word and changed, Jonah flees putting everybody in jeopardy, their lives in jeopardy wherever he went. The Bible says that he went to Tarsus. He went on a boat. And the boat, hallelujah, went through a bunch of turmoil, almost killing the whole crew. They had to throw Jonah off the boat. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Threw him off the boat. God is so merciful and so gracious. Before Jonah drowns to death, God saves him. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where God told you to do something and you didn't do it. And it, and it jeopardized everything that was around you. <laughs> but he still loved you so much that he put you into a private place where it was just you and him. And he pep talked you. And you told him how much you loved him and you repented. Aren't you thankful that lo the Lord loves you so much that no matter what you do, that he has, a much, he has so much mercy and grace for you that he will put you into a quiet place Thank you, Lord. to get you right. Yes. Yes. Bible says that when that fish let him go and he went to Nineveh, the Bible says that he preached to Nineveh for three days. But Nineveh received the word. Yes. They received the word. And then they only received it. They went on a fast and they changed their nature. 
They changed their heart. And because they changed their heart, God saw evidence of his heart. And he accepted them. You follow me? He accepted what was evidence of their heart. And this made, watch this. And when God changed these people, this made Jonah mad. Jonah was angry. He was mad. Yeah. I'm mad. I'm big mad. <laughs> so mad, elder, that he said that it's better for me to be dead. Because that's what anger does. It makes you a murderer. And if you are a murderer, you are liable to be dead. When I read this, Sam, it messed me up because it made me realize that there are people who are doing the things of God that don't have the heart of God. Yeah, you can be following someone who don't even have his heart. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it, and it showed me another thing. It showed me another thing. That God did all that with Jonah. And it, it, and it didn't change his heart. And I said, Lord, you telling me you cannot change this? You couldn't change his heart after saving him from, a, from, a, from being th over, oh, thrown over on a boat? And you picked him up by a big fish? And, you, and the fish, that's crazy, crazy stuff. And, he's, and his heart ain't right. And you did all that? I don't know who I'm talking to. God did all that in your life, and you still ain't changed? You still doing the same stuff? And God has shown you all that? It told me that not even God can change a heart that doesn't believe in his heart. If you don't believe in God's heart, he can't change your heart. Not even God can do it. Come here, Lady A. See if you can see if you can pass her. See if you can. Let's see what she does. Pick her back up. Let, make her a part of the moment. Make her a part of the moment. So, Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm talking about how our words and how our hearts can be accepted by God. That's what I'm talking about. How in the world can my heart and my words be accepted by God? And the way, the only way, is if your heart and your mind is transformed to his heart and his mind. To his heart and his words. If your heart and your words are not transformed to his heart and to his word, you will not be accepted. You are a murderer. I want you to see this. Do me a favor, put up Jonah chapter 4. I got to say this. Jonah chapter 4, verse number 2. I want you to see it. He prayed to the Lord and said, please, Lord, this is Jonah, was not this what I said while I was still in my own country? Therefore, in order to forestall this, I fled to Tarsus. For I knew that you are a gracious, compassionate God, slow to anger, and abundant in love and kindness. In other words, his love never fails. His love never runs out. And one who relents concerning calamity. In other words, God will, will change his mind on destroying you. God will change his mind on destroying you. Give me the next verse. Therefore now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for death is better to me than life. He refused, the prophet of God refused to have a heart 
and his words be transformed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And the reason why I stand up here before you today is for this reason. After studying this word, doing some meditation, bring, pull, back up, pull back up Psalms 19, verse 14. Pro, excuse me, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 14. Thank you, lady. After doing a bunch of prayer, I need you to know the ministry that you belong to. That the church that we are and the people that we are sent to, that the Lord had me change our vision statement for this church. Our vision in this ministry is to transform hearts to be acceptable to God. Our vision of this church is to transform hearts to be pleased and acceptable to God. If that is your heart when you come in this ministry, if that is your heart when you connect with the people in this house, if that is the heart that you have when you hear the Word of God from, put, preached from this stage, you're in the right place. We are heart changers. The testimonies that I hear from you, the lot, the people that I can point out in this church, we are preparing hearts that are accepted by God. That's our vision for this church. My prayer is you at the right place. I want to pray for you. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give a benediction. If you got to go, you got to go. I will tell you this, don't offer the Lord anything if your heart and your words ain't right because he ain't accepting them. But if you're able to stay after this benediction, I want this ministry to do this. Everybody, whether you're on keys, whether you're on camera, whether you're behind the curtain, I want you to do this. Over the next 15 seconds, I need you to think about whoever you may hate, you may be angry with, and I need you to let it go. I need you to, if that is an order, <laughs> I'm not, that's not a request. That's an order. Let them go. Because as long as you're part of this ministry, it is our responsibility to make sure you're covered and accepted by God. I want you to take the next 50 seconds and do that. Then I'm going to give a benediction. And then for those of you who can stay, I want to anoint you as a covenant that you are no longer a murderer, but you are acceptable in his sight. Amen. Take that 15 seconds. I'll give the benediction and I'll pray. Let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
we beg you, we beseech you by the mercies of God that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. Make sure we're not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may prove what is the good and the acceptable. We want to be accepted. Word of God. God, we thank you. We honor you. We glorify you. We ask that you would cover your people. And as the old saints would say, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.